All right, welcome back. So this is some stuff that I really thought was important for me to share um, because it wouldn't be Uproot Academy and I wouldn't be Tiffany if I didn't go over these kind of social emotional concepts, especially because these are things that come up when you're applying or when you're taking a risk, which is what we're all doing in this process, right? We don't know and nothing is really guaranteed. And so things like imposter syndrome can come up. So I don't know if you've ever heard of imposter syndrome, um, but imposter syndrome is when you feel like you don't belong somewhere or that for some reason they might have made a mistake in accepting you. And so with imposter syndrome, the assumption is um, that you think that what you know is so small than what other people know. Or that the reason why you got there was because somehow you then tricked admissions, right? And everybody else is their authentic self and they're smarter than you, more intelligent, they're more involved, they're more this, they're more that, the list goes on. And it starts to play with our emotions and our brain. When the reality is what you know and what others know, especially if you're in the same place, is most likely pretty equal. You know, working at this high school um, where we do admissions and those sorts of things, and probably the same is going to be true for you now. It's so interesting to me that imposter syndrome shows up sometimes during the application process. um, And when it happens, if you don't catch it, you'll never apply. But a lot of times I've seen it show up when students think that they can actually do it and they have all of this courage. And then when they get in, that's when they start to question whether or not they're good enough. They start talking to other people and they say, wait, you did this and you did this. And then they feel like they need to shrink. But what they're not doing is talking about what they did, right? Or just how scary the process was, right? Brene Brown, love her. Uh, She is like the vulnerability queen. Um, She talks a lot about it's not our strengths and our amazingness that connects us to people. It makes us in awe of people, but what connects us is our weaknesses, right? And so understanding that, for the most part, if you think on the assumption level of this slide, probably the rest of your peers do as well. And so I want you to acknowledge if you're already feeling like, oh, this school that my teacher told me I should apply to, I don't know if I'm good enough. I'm looking online. I look at the students. They look different than me, or they come from different backgrounds, or maybe their family can afford this and I can't. All of these things will like seep into our our bodies, right? And all of a sudden we feel like, oh no, I don't belong here. I don't belong to be in the application pool. Now, let me say something. Anything can happen with the application process, right? Nothing is guaranteed, but people are going to apply. So why not you? You should go ahead and just put your application in and let's just see what happens. So whenever that imposter syndrome, that fear seeps in, try to overcome it with courage and use information. Okay. Why would my teacher tell me to apply to this school, even though it wasn't on my list and I look at it and it looks really prestigious, or even if it was just something you didn't think you belonged at or a place you didn't think you belonged, say, why would they do it? I don't think they're trying to, you know, put me in a situation where I'm going to be embarrassed. They actually believe in me. And so ask yourself, why can't I believe that I can do this? And just kind of sort out your emotions as you go through this process. But don't let imposter syndrome hold you back. The next thing, (laughs) this is something I talk a lot about because when I was applying to college, I was so excited, but I don't think I had that level of excitement, especially when I deposited and I got in and I was super excited. Um, I don't think I ever felt that level of excitement in my life. And so it felt like anxiety. Because excitement and anxiety actually have the same symptoms, right? Some of us get really queasy. We might like, you know, be jittery. Um, And so we're like, oh, no, I must be anxious. Something must be wrong. Uh, Maybe this is not the right decision. We might get really nervous. We might start asking other people what they think so they can validate our, you know, our nervousness. But I want you to know that anxiety and excitement are two sides of the same coin. But anxiety, if you look at the actual definition, It's to help us to not be put in a dangerous situation. And excitement should be something that we're looking forward to. So ask yourself, let's use the right term. Am I anxious? Is there something dangerous on the other side of going to this school? Or is this really excitement? So I just want you all to recognize your body. So maybe even now, close your eyes and think about this idea of applying to schools, maybe see a school that you really want to go to and just scan your body 
right? Is there any queasiness, any hot, cold sensation, any tension, any pressure as your shoulders release? And once you notice all that, take a deep breath and exhale. And say to yourself, I'm excited about this process. Right? We got to learn to program our body to be excited and to only allow our anxiety and our nervousness to come in when it needs to be, when there's actually something going wrong. All right. So just wanted to teach you all that as well.